Hey, yo, guys, this was an absolute blast, man. But check this out. Aussie Sons podcast with my boys over in Australia and the Coast to Coast podcast crew. Let's get it. Yo, what's up? This is So Says Jay. Welcome to the Aussie Suns fans podcast. Yeah, these guys are fucking idiots. Yeah, the podcast is borderline okay, maybe, but I listen to every week, so you should too. Welcome, everybody, to uh, season two, episode 32. Um, the last episode, really, of this season uh, before we head into the off season. Uh, I am your host, Gavin, and I'm here with Nate and Hamo. How are we going, lads? Uh, I've had a few friends check in on me this afternoon, genuinely, because they know I take this shit seriously. And uh, all I can say is I'm sad inside. How mate? This is horrible, man. It's unexpected. Um, this is going to be the hardest cast I reckon we've done. So I've had a few friends check in on me as well. And um, all I can say is people are cunts. Hmm. Uh, All right. So they, they haven't been. As, me too. They they have not been as kind. Um, and I apologise upfront to everybody. My internet here is like the Phoenix Suns in Game Seven. It's fucking putrid and in and out and barely giving any effort whatsoever. So I may drop out at times, which means Sounds you two like will have, have to carry. Up. You'll have to you'll have to carry uh, everything that happens from here on in uh, if I drop out. But uh, obviously today we dropped out. We uh, we are out of the NBA playoffs after a loss to the Dallas Mavericks. I'm not going to even say the score because I'm still pretty sure that Luca outscored our entire team by himself. Um, disappointing was tough to watch. Uh, tough to be a Phoenix fan today because, honestly, I, I don't know what you guys think, but this hurts a hell of a lot more than last year's finals loss to the Bucks. Yeah, man, I, last year I think we were all still a bit surprised that we got to the finals. Um, so it was uh, take the gift and enjoy the moment. And this year, I guess, because there was so much expectation on being back there, and I think that's the bit that hurts is we really believed we were going to be there. Um, and every game was just a win last year. And we were just so excited to be to that next step. And then this year it was, come on, guys, there's uh, six, eight more games to get to where we need to be. And we weren't enjoying the wins along the way as much. Emma? Yeah, look, totally... Um... That's totally right, man. This is um, not only hurt, hurtful, but it's confusing, you know? Um, this is not how it was supposed to be. Maybe we underestimated the Mavs, but, I mean, we just didn't play as us, and it's it's bad, man, but we'll, we'll get into all of this as we go along. Yeah, uh, not, uh, not going to use excuses. We just didn't play well enough when it came to the playoffs. Um, 64 wins during the season, uh, which were fantastic. We enjoyed potentially the greatest, um, the greatest season of Suns basketball when it came to a regular season. But the NBA playoffs, both the Pelican series and the Mavericks series were nothing but nothing short of disappointing. I mean, let's let's be honest. We went 2-0 up against the Mavs. I think last time we recorded, we pretty much said that there's nothing that the Mavs could do to even touch us. We said we closed um, it out in six. Yeah, and then, then we saw basically what happened over the last five, six, five games, I guess. Um, really quite disappointing. Yeah, they, they didn't look like the whole playoffs. They haven't looked like the team that played the regular season. I know we all see that. We've all said that, but fucking hell. No, I mean, the, even the, even the, watching the the post game uh, press conference, I don't know if you guys watched that. Um, they yeah, really had it in their entire. I was like, I watched a fair bit of it twice, and I, I went and back and I watched the Booker and CP three interview again, and. It was just something didn't sit right with me about the way they looked, about the way they responded. 
It was like they were defeated before. Like the, they didn't seem shocked that they were sitting there on the losing side. Yeah, they just there was something not right about this entire series, really. Um, it was just it was so flattening. Home games were great until today, obviously. Um, and then what we dished up today was just it was horrific at epic proportions. Like I'm generally pretty positive about the Suns. On I try to avoid the negativity. Um, I left the groups. I've done all that sort of shit. But today was just so disappointing. To lose by 40 in a game seven, it's, uh, well, fuck, halfway through, well, actually, until half time, none of our starters, like our big three starters, had even hit a shot. Yeah, Booker had two free throws, didn't he? And that was it. Yeah, and yeah, CP had, had two free highest. throws and hit one of them. But uh, look, I, I mean, we will get back to that after game presser. Just, I just wrote down a few of the comments that bothered me, and um, one where they said it's just a loss, thirty points or thirty, it's still a loss. I'm like, yeah, I get the second part of that, but why is it just a loss? Like when they're asking about how you're feeling about it, um, Booker did make the comment. Look, it's something to build on. It's more fuel on the fire. I know, I just feel like it's a little bit too dismissive for what yeah. we're all sitting here feeling, you know? CP3 is denied any injury, but, you know, we'll wait wait for the next few days of rumor mill to, um, to back the one. Opinion, Chris yeah. Paul, well, we, we, down, we, there was, there was plenty, plenty rocking on Twitter today that he had an upper thigh injury, but won't acknowledge it. He just looks sore. You know, and um, even one of the, the broadcasters or someone today said that since his legit birthday, you know, a week or so ago, he's just gone downhill. Mm. And he's he just looks hurt. I think the whole team looks really, really beat down. You know, like we weren't expecting to have such a tough series against the Pelicans. We weren't sure as fuck weren't expecting to have this series against the Mavs. And disappear now. Fuck, we pinned this as the three. easiest series in the in the, the West. And seeing what's going on in the East too, no bucks. Holy fuck, man! Yeah. But there's a, there's a lot more issues going on behind the scenes, I think, and uh, we'll get to that a bit later on. Uh, I mean, let's talk about some of the things that. Um, I mean, Gab, you sent me a text with some some rumours that surfaced that were meant to be post-game things and then popped up mid-game, and that was all news to me, um, especially when it talk, starts talking about the coach of the year um, in, you know, trouble with his job or something, and then you hear in the post-game interview, they start asking contractual questions about Monty to Book and CP3, and um, CP3 cut him off and basically said, or it might have been Book actually said, look, the contractual stuff is between Monty and the front office. But what, what were you saying today? That Because, I mean, I, I saw the message you sent me, and I'm like, geez. Something something happened. The, the, something happened late in the year. Um, and part of that message I sent you today, which we saw off, uh, I think it was Zin Varlock on Twitter, um, was effectively all this shit started when they cut Frank instead of Alfred Payton. Um everything started going downhill. So whether or not that was a confidence thing, I, I don't know, but... Um, well, that goes to say the, something about Alfred Payton then. If, if they want... If the team would rather have Frank, who, great teammate, but for all intents and purposes, could not play, yeah. could not step on the court, and they wanted to keep the injured guy over a guy that could play minutes, what the fuck is Alfred Payton doing in the locker room? And that that's a, that's a question that I think needs to play out over the off season. And look, fact of the matter is, we're not going to see Alfred Payton back next year. It's oh god, it's no. cut and dry. He's the Suns aren't signing him again. Um, but reality is, if that's impacted us that much that we performed that poorly during the playoffs, questions have to be asked. 
Look, one of the big rumours coming out after today, it broke on Twitter, it broke on Facebook, it broke on every social media that you could find. Um, there was supposedly a conf well, maybe not a confrontation, but an exchange of words between Monty and DA late in the third, midway or late through the third. I wasn't actually watching the game. I was just listening on the earpiece. Safe to say we were down by 50 at that point. We <laughs> were just, you know, dead in the water. And I won't be 100% right, but the gist of the idea was this person was behind the Phoenix Suns bench and overheard Monty say, well, do you want to play or not? Or do you want to play something like that? And DA just sat there and said, no. And that's why he did not play in the fourth. Now, when asked about it in the presser, Monty said, it's internal. That's all he would say. Now... Watching a few media outlets, you know, inside NBA, all that kind of stuff, Kenny the Jet was talking about how the Phoenix Suns need to be really smart about this because any team in the Western Conference could benefit twice by signing DeAndre Ayton. They get a great player who's done well most of the year and they take it away from being a powerhouse that is the Phoenix Suns in the regular season. Now... For all of this to come out so quickly, there's got to be some sort of drama going on back there with DA, with Monty, you know, CP and Booker come out together. DA wasn't with them. I don't know if that's a standard thing or not. But they're just, they're... I know. C, CP and Book do all, basically all of the after gamers by themselves. It by just them seems very teams. strange to me to have this come well, out. Well, the strange part was that DA didn't go to media at all. Um, and look, there's there was clearly something that went on, particularly with the question to Mon Monty. Um, it's just, it's really disappointing to see that that shit sort of is blowing up after a series loss. And my, my big thing was that, look, DA copped a lot of shit on Twitter again and blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff. We passed the ball once to him in the first quarter. Now, where did we have an advantage against Dallas? It was with DA in the middle of the fucking court. Why weren't we running plays for that? And I, think, um, um, I spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, and reality is that I think DA is sort of sitting there now going, well, reality is this team does not want to use me. They, they don't want me to be a part of the the bigger picture offense. And would you blame him? Well, it's it's strange though, isn't it? Because all year he's we've seen his game grow. We've seen the the, the that mid range turnaround skyhook. He's just he has grown, and it is weird that they don't use him more, and they use him in certain segments of the game, not in certain situations which is strange. Um, well, that was the thing. I, I mean, they used him once in the first quarter. JaVale McGee came in the second quarter and they used him the first four plays of the second quarter. All the ball went through JaVale. So what the hell? Like DA was possibly being punished for, I don't know, whatever. No. You know, whatever no, the it's happened said, for too was. long to be punishment. Yeah, it's not punishment. And you don't, no, fuck, with, you don't fuck with W's and L's. I think it was Vossi got on one of our comments or posts or chats that were on today and um, said something along the lines like, yeah, Monty, you can be as upset as you want. I'm paraphrasing, Vossi. I'm sorry. My memory's not that good, mate. Don't worry. Um, if you haven't used about 13 irregular puns, you, you're definitely paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> no, he says, um, you know, if you, you want your centre to play better, something along the lines of don't have him standing out on the perimeter. Like... Makes fucking sense to me. And I think we, we brought that up a couple of times um, that, that they've always got the, the switching of DA out onto... like the, the, the Dallas just knew how to switch the D and suck either DA out to the perimeter or Luca was just having his way with him uh, in the mid-range. I'm not, I'm not too sure how to take most of what was said just then, man. There was um, the D and sucking and <laughs> Luca enjoying himself, so I'm not... See, that, see that's, Luke, that's the fun of this part, right? <laughs> you your boss, Gab. That's okay. The D, the sucking and the yeah. fun of it all. <laughs> Look, do you think possibly 
that, you know, we're talking about all this possible internal tension, like, you know, there's the high possibility that CP3 is injured, you know, like we're talking about. There's a high possibility that um, Booker's suffering from the Kardashian curse. There's a whole heap of shit that's possible. But what about this close to the end of the season? What if it happens to be something has emerged with Saba? What if that's taken a massive turn? Now, DA is just sort of like, no, I'm taking my ball and going back to bloody Bahamas or whatever. Well, he, he, let's let's just talk Gav's frozen up a bit here. Contractually, he's a restricted free agent, which means any offer he gets anywhere else, we get first right. So there's no way that we don't match any contract he's offered to at least turn him into a trade chip. There's no way he walks for nothing. I uh, know, but how much we we want to give up? Well, it doesn't matter because we match the salary and then we just find a trade partner to the value of his salary. If he gets $30 million on four years as a as an offer from someone else, as a restricted free agent, we just match it. And then because we've got his bird rights, we can go over to do it if we need to. And so then who, just will be, who will be our centre? Who? Well, we can't base the oh, whole... I'm not saying I want that to happen. Me. I'm just saying he doesn't walk for no reason. No, I'm just he, saying he hypothetically. Like, who, who will we bring in? Like, say DA's gone. You know, who will we who would we bring in to play our centre? JaVale cannot run, you know, thirty eight minutes a game. He's good, but we need someone that's going to be strong. Gav, what do you reckon? Well, JaVale's not a starter, and um, reality is that as disappointing as today was, um, and the lack of playing him or, or playing him through play calls and everything else. We've seen over the last, let's say, six months, DeAndre Ayton is like a top five centre in the league. Yeah, but the, so, the question was, if, totally if, if, if he goes restricted free agency, gets an offer from another team, when we just hypothetically say it's 30 million over, over four years, or 30 million a year for four years. If there... You if, can't if, get that if, much. Can he? No. Why not? He's not worth it. Uh, his his max contract that he can get with is with the Suns, and I think it's about twenty eight and a half in the first year. Um, that with, a, with a growth with a growth over that. Yeah. So but, average um, I think if he signs with somebody else, it's a lot less than that. It's like 22, 23 mil. Okay. So either way, whatever the number is. He being a restricted free agent, we can match it. So if it's all yep. broken and we're forced to trade him, because they'll match, they'll match anything just to have a tradable chip. They're not going to let him walk. So yep. they match it, and then the question was, well, who do they get? Who do you target to replace? So the obvious, Kat? the obvious one is Cat. That's where that's where the discussions will happen straight up. But with the the end to the season that Minnesota had. I can't see any sort of trade happening there. And it come out of um, having most then, postseason surgery. Honestly, the, the discussions are gonna center probably around someone like Vucevic in Chicago. Oh no, God no. That doesn't um, but if you look at every other center in the league, there's not a hell of a lot out there that we can sort of put maybe Christian Wood at um, no. If, but there's for a, sign and trade, for a sign and trade, not much. Um, reality is the side with the biggest um, cap space that will probably push it hard for DA is going to be Detroit. Um, but what are we what are we trade to Detroit? Like oh well, what what's Sorry, Detroit yeah, got? Well, it's going to well, be Jeremy Grant and some draft picks, maybe. But it doesn't, it won't solve the center issue no. for us because Javal McGee is not a starting center. No, he, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's a great player, but he can't handle that position. Oh, he can't handle that role. You know what I mean? So we need someone like, I don't think he can do it as a starter either. But if we maybe had 
two people working combined time. I would love Stephen Adams. You know how much I love Stephen Adams. I always talk about him. You're not trained DA. No, I'm right talking about trained DA. You're not about getting him. Stephen Adams from Memphis. It's it's not just now. not happening. Not now. Anyway, not let's not, not let's not talk too much about trading DA because no, we got our yeah, off season shit will happen later we're, on. We're we're um, we're we're a positive pod though, right? We try or at least we try it. to be have a bit of a laugh, but we all want to see DA stay. Right. So let's just let's just get over the day and let's just move on from trading him. Reality is the best the best thing for the Suns is that DeAndre Ayton stays. Yeah, that's that's no. the that's the best result for the Suns. Absolutely. Always want um, to play for us. Andre Ayton stays. Cameron Johnson stays. Um, that's from an off-season perspective, they're the best results. And shit, I saw on Twitter all day that basically everybody but Devin Booker should be tradable. <laughs> what <laughs> else did you, you see know on Twitter, Gav? Like we talk about Twitter, Reddit, and even our lame message feed today. Fucking <laughs> hell. I, I, I saw a couple of comments and just stayed off. Um, so I, I haven't I haven't actually caught up on whatever garbage has taken place. That's probably why I'm able to grin a little bit. Would you like to fill us in and have a bit of a rant? Uh, you so like, basically like you were on, losing your shit this afternoon. On everything, <laughs> everything I read everywhere I read, um, we should inf- effectively blow the team up completely. Um, Chris Paul needs to go. DeAndre Ayton needs to go. Cam Johnson, McCall Bridges, they need to go. Basically, I think, well, the most prevalent comment I've seen today was Chris Paul, Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, DeAndre Aiden, trade them all for Dane. Jeez. Um, Jeez. Now, would I like would I like Dane at the Phoenix Suns? Yes, I would. Oh, no. I also would not like to blow up the entire fucking squad to get him there. No chance. <laughs> wow. So. Someone well, actually, oh, fuck it. This, this... Oh, yeah, I saw it all. Um, look, yes, it's an emotional time. Yes, it sucks ass. It, it's so disappointing. As I said, this year was far more painful than last year. Um, this loss was far more painful than what we went through last year. But at the end of the day, the next season will start and we'll all be Suns fans again, and we'll all be fucking carrying on with the same shit we did this year. Um, Knowing that our team will... If we can maintain the squad we've got, maintain that core, yes, we probably have to add a piece or two, but reality is if we maintain it, this side's still a playoff team. It's still a side that's going to compete for the Western Conference Finals like next year, and we're all going to be in the same fucking boat we were this year carrying on like idiots, supporting this team as far as we can um, because that's what we've done forever. And I've been a fan since 91, 92, Nate. Yep, 93 team. Yep. 93. You beat me me by a year or two, so. I think you guys found me about four months ago, didn't you? So Hamo's bandwagon. Um, nah, man, no, man. Reality, reality is, as disappointing as this is, we will all shake it off and we'll all follow the Suns next year and we'll go again. And the important thing is that Nate and I are still going to Arizona to fuck shit up. <laughs> yeah, because basically we need a holiday and it's booked, so fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, Gav, we've been talking about it. We're going to go watch our new favourite Phoenix team, the Mercury. Mercury. We're still going to get to see a game at. Um, the you know, the, the only reason we booked the trip. The only reason we booked the trip was to go watch the Mercury. That's it. <laughs> we want to watch the and game. Drink and drink at Marley's. And drink at Marley's. And drink at Marley's. We want to drink at Marley's and watch Diana Tarazi and um, Skylar Diggin Smith because she's hot, and uh, Sophie Cunningham because she's hot, and that's why we're going to Phoenix. We were never ever going for the finals, basketball gods. <laughs> It was all a ruse. You uh, fuckers. Okay. Uh, but uh, either way, look, yeah, disappointing. Um, disappointing into the season. But I will say, fuck, I've enjoyed this year with you lads on the pod. It's been a hell of a lot of fun this year. And we can go back a couple of years when we're winning 19 games and it wasn't as much fun. Now, there's a lot of people that sort of, I, again, I saw on Twitter today, I, I preferred the years where it was 19 wins 
No, you fucking didn't. Nobody enjoyed the years that it was 19 wins. Everybody fucking loved this season because this side is a Western Conference fucking finalist, NBA finals contender. Did we lose in this seven games to Dallas? Yes, we did. But you can sure as fucking hell bet that this side's going to be back next year and yeah. back right up there. And I see all this shit that, oh, next year the Clippers are going to be healthy and Denver's going to be healthy. And I don't want to listen to your shit. Yes. The Clippers, Clippers yes, the Clippers. are fucking healthy. The Clippers will be healthy because Kawhi's going to be back. He's also 30 fucking four years old and a broken down bitch. The Lakers are a fucking broken down old ass team. The Denver Nuggets are going to get Jamal Murray back who hasn't played for two years and he's a broken down bitch. The Phoenix Suns are still going to be an NBA Finals contender next year. Whether you like it or not, whether you're a Suns fan or not, that's what we're going to watch next year because that's who we are now. Yeah, Gav, I want to interrupt. Seeing how you're talking about broken down bitches, um, I do want to go back to the, the year of 19 wins and a broken down bitch who I was being a little bit too polite to at the last pod. Uh, Mark Chris, I'm a bitch, Chris. I have not had a former Sun player that I have flipped on so quickly after this series. <laughs> that guy fucking pisses me off. Not I even a moron. I was in. I mean, he's he's, he's on par with the moron. Man, at least they can actually play basketball. Like either one of those guys could still start on a team. Marquise Chris is a three minutes at the back end of the fourth quarter bitch, and he carried on like one. And they're up by thirty. I wish they him and Biombo had caught each other and it had gone like full bloody UFC because the Congo would have killed. Oh, busy, busy would have whooped that ass. Unbelievable. Busy would have whooped that ass, Marquez. Chris, you're a fake tough guy. You're a fake tough guy in Phoenix. You're still a fake tough guy. And, well, look, and a fake listening. basketball player. He was a fake basketball player coming into the Marquez, draft. if you're still, still listening, fake. very Nate good and I friends will be, with Dwight Howard. Nate, Nate and I will be in Phoenix the first week of fucking July, uh, June. Uh, come down to Marley's. We'll meet you there because you're, you're a fake fucking tough guy. I might, I might need to sit on your shoulders though, Kev. <laughs> Please. Look, if I can jump in right here, just to um, pass on, you know, what Gav's saying. Um, it's been an awesome year chatting on the pod. It's been an awesome year with everything that we've done. We've had a lot of super fans on. We've had a lot of celebrity guests. We've had a lot of exposure, which is great. Keep helping us, keep pumping all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> Um, you know, a few people that we really need to say thanks to from our group. Um, you know, your Vossies. I'm going to forget heaps of people, but it's not the academy. So. Why are you thinking Vossie? He's a fucking piece of nah, shit. Vossie. Uh, <laughs> he he thinks the same as you, Gav, so that's mutual. <laughs> the best thing Benny. I ever saw from Vossie was when he got pushed on the road by Nate in front of a car. <laughs> no, look. Oh, not my Benny. finest moment. Of the Aussie Suns fans herself, Erin, she's amazing. Um, you know, Jared Humphrey, Zach Shaw, Mari. Um, come on, help me out. Who else? I got to. I got to give a shout out to Jared too. He messaged me today when I fucking muted the group and wasn't talking, and just asked me whether or not I was going all right. Thanks, Jared. <laughs> that's that, that's Jared Humphreys. Hmm. Yep. Well, it, you know. We, we did that uh, 40K walk together. So he's a, you talk about things to be grateful for. Met a brother from the Phoenix Suns family and we got to hang out for a day and do something that you don't normally do, which is really cool. But. Well, if we're going to, we're going to extend your shout outs and I'll help you out. I'm going to shout out to Angelina, so says Jay, um, Dan Duarte, Flex from Jersey, all, all the guys that jumped on this year. Um, not made Paul. the pod what it was. Hey? Pierre, but not, but not Paul. In. Pierre cut in. Um, all the guys Paul. that jumped on. Still not Paul. Uh, Paul, we're we're still we're going to get you on Paul. I'm I promise you. I promise you. It's it's basically Nate now that's stopping it because he said it's too funny. Don't invite him. <laughs> we're already um, up people for next season, guys. <laughs> <but at least laughs> 
Let's just do it in Phoenix. Show. Let's just do it in Phoenix from Mali. We're going to do it in Phoenix with everyone that we can get hold of. Um, you know, hopefully we can get Voider on. Hopefully, uh, Jay, Dan, Flex, any, anyone we can get on while we're over there, we'll get on. Um, but reality is, as an extension of what Hamo said, thank you to everyone who jumps on. Ash Shaw, who jumps on, helps us out when we're short. Trev jumped on a couple of times this year and was fantastic. Who's that? Um, we talk to him every now and again. Um, we're the young fella from WA. Boyd. Yeah, Boyd, yeah. Boyd. yeah. Well, I'm getting to Boyd. I'm getting to Boyd. Jono, WA. Um, Jono. Yeah, look. Um, all the guys that everyone who takes the time out to listen to us comment um, do all that fun stuff. I'm still disappointed that none of you like enough of our videos and share it with people, but um, you'll get there. You'll get there. Every time you listen, you should like. Simple as that. Um, but all of that, the one guy, as Hamo mentioned, Boyd um, had a baby a couple of days ago. Boyd, congratulations, mate. Oh, well, so. Um, I think Joey, is it? Little Joey. Little, Little Joey. Joey. What did he say? He um, lost the Nash battle. Yeah, he lost the Nash battle. He was trying to name the baby Nash. Um, I actually like the name, whether it was Phoenix related or not. So bad luck on that one, Boyd, because Nash would have worked. Yeah, uh, but Joey, Joey works too. You know, young Australian fucking kangaroo that lives in a pouch works. Uh, that's all good too. Congratulations, Boyd. Could have had um, the Nash rash, though. Shame, shame you couldn't jump the on the whole boy clan. <laughs> yeah, congratulations to the whole boy clan. Um, there, I think there's fourteen of them now. Is that right, Nate? I think, yeah, I mean, and, and she's already pregnant with the next three. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Um, on the way down. So, uh, congratulations, Boyd. Congratulations to the boy clan. Uh, hopefully. In a couple of weeks, when we start to look at our off-season episodes, we'll have Boyd back. Um, you guys need to start your research. Who are we going to draft? Who are we going to trade? All that sort of stuff. <laughs> Nate, oh, yeah, you and right. I, you and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna meet you in Brisbane on the third. We're gonna fly out on the fourth. Um, yeah. We're gonna make a mess for a week in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're going to do all to the it. stuff we said we man. We're, we're going to go to Talking yes, Stick right. Resort and spend a couple of days there because we still love the old sponsor, even if it's Footprint now. We're going to go to Tempe because, you know, it's Tempe. Um, yeah. We've got to go downtown because we're going to be at Marley's every day, regardless of where we're staying anyway. So That's all. Uh, and you, we're going to go share a couple of Mercury games. Phoenix, to the Phoenix team, the Mercury, yeah. Couple of couple of Mercury games, couple of maybe some uh, some D backs games. Yeah, if there's D backs game, I'm I'm just, okay. Just because we can, um, and we're going to meet our, um, our our American Pod family, and we're going to meet our American Pod family. So guys, we're coming over still. We'll see you. We'll be there on the fourth. Uh, I think we. What time's our flight, Nate? We get there about lunchtime. On the fourth, uh, it's just about the same time as check in. No, because we leave we leave LAX at twelve. Just a heads up for uh, we school. leave LAX at twelve. We'll be there about two p.m. on the fourth. Um, we'll probably already be a mess, but yeah. there is a pool party at Talking Stick that night. Yeah, there is. Um, which we will probably <laughs> completely and utterly destroy and get thrown out of, but we're going to be there. <laughs> um, Amo, last so comments. I just want to finish off this season by uh, saying thank you to the Phoenix Suns team, the Phoenix Suns Australia fans, Aussie Suns fans, the podcast family, everyone that's been involved in this from top to bottom. I've got a couple of quotes here regarding Phoenix, but I'm just going to choose probably the best one. And it's from a person called S.A. Sash. Sasha's, I'm not sure how to say it, but it says, hope rises like a phoenix from the ashes of shattered dreams. See you all next year. Night. I mean, my comments are a little less positive. <laughs> I didn't, there was one quote that Book made that I really liked in these post-game presser. Um, and again, it's not positive, but he did say, that was a good old-fashioned ass whooping from beginning to end. 
Now, I'm not going to talk about the game, but that's kind of feel how I feel about season two of this podcast. From, from the very first episode to here, I feel like it's been a, a good old-fashioned ass whooping. So thank you, gentlemen, for the uh, raw memories. <laughs> uh, like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, at GuessworkGav, at SirHamo, at Nikki's Falcon, at Aussie Suns fans. Like our videos, share, post, all that sort of shit. Give us some boost up on uh, Twitter. I know everyone's down, but like I said, in 18 days' time, Nate and I are going to come over and cheer everyone the fuck up, Aussie style. So, damn straight. Well, we lost today and everybody's oh, down. We will great. get there, guys. Um, we'll be back up. We'll start again next season. Um, and the Suns will be a NBA title contender again next year. Um, Everybody else, all the other pods have fucking sign-offs and everything like that. So I've been thinking about it non-stop this week. How do I sign our pod off? In true Aussie style, get fucked. How was that? Was that good? I don't know if that was good. It's going to be a good time. <laughs>